Thank you for coming to hear me talk about how to build customer love. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it's definitely one of my passions. Uh, as uh, the introduction said, I'm Rebe. I'm running customer and employee experience at Pigment. And Pigment is the next generation planning solution for forward thinking companies. So we actually power companies like Figma, Carta, Brex, Deliveroo, Gong, and many others. And since it started in 2019, we've raised over $150 million, and we're expanding our operations across the globe, specifically in the US market as well. So I wanted to give you some practical steps of how we went about building customer love at Pigment. So the most important thing is to talk about why this is a very worthwhile investment from day one. So it shouldn't be an afterthought. And I think we know that a lot of us are focused on closing the new customers, making sure that there's new revenue. And while this is really important, actually building a very exceptional customer experience is probably the most important thing that you can do. And the reason is, is because especially at the beginning, you're trying to differentiate yourself from the competition. And maybe your product isn't yet fully there with their potential, so you need to find ways to build that value quickly. And the easiest way to build that value quickly is by building trust, value to our customers, and really differentiating with that experience. And it also makes business sense. So we know that actually the most efficient ways to grow your business are through renewals, expansions, cross-sales, upsells. And just to illustrate this point, this is a Gartner study with companies under 50 million of revenue. And what they found is that actually over 60%, or sorry, just under 60% of their revenue came from existing business. Another study that's interesting is from Forrester that said that companies that are customer obsessed are actually 2.5 times uh, better at growing their revenue quicker. So it makes sense. And the reality is that many of us can claim that we are customer obsessed, that we're customer first. It's very easy to put that on a, on a slide, on a website, but the truth is that it's, it's going to down spiral very quickly if you're not substantiating that with true advocacy, with true results and stories from your customers. So here are my practical steps on how I went about when I joined Pigment on building that customer love. The first step is that you have to know what you want to achieve and invest in the right foundation. So uh, if you don't know what if there are the biggest things that will bring that impact and what, how you're going to measure it, you're not going to know where to invest your first moments. So what we do at Pigment is every six months we define OKRs, objective and key results, and we say this is what we believe is going to make the most impact, and we do that on a company-wide level, on a team-wide level, and we really put every resource to focus on that aspect. Then we're also very clear about what the state looks like today and where we want to go, and actually the example on the slide is the real slides when I joined Pigment where I put on a, on a page what I wanted the customer experience team to have and look like. And as you can see, most of everything was red. And I was thinking, you know, where are we going to prioritize and spend the most time? And with the pain of my heart, I had to put a lot of things red as well because we were just not going to be able to get to everything. But how I prioritized was based on what would have the most impact, what was the most urgent, and also what had dependencies for us to build into the future. So yeah, it was a, a very interesting exercise and actually I'm, I'm pretty happy to say that pretty much everything on that slide is now green at Pigment. And very important is to invest in the right tooling. So outside of your people, having the right infrastructure is going to really help you accelerate and get a lot faster at everything that you build. So I'm very, very fortunate to have incredible um, leadership team that really allows me to put an investment into my team's resources and tooling. And so I will start with Pigment because of course we use Pigment for everything. So I actually use Pigment to track our OKRs, our upsells, our renewals, our performance. And then I also have a tool called Plan Hat, uh, which allows us to have a 360 view of our customers. This is really powerful because we really are able to not just bring the revenue numbers from our customers, but we can see their usage, we can see they're participating in community, if they're participating in the academy, if they're giving us any tickets. So we're able to automate a lot of tasks because of this information. And I have a lot more things. So I have the community platform, which I'll talk about in a second, our academy as well, that helps a lot in self-serve and making customers empowered from the beginning. My second tip is to pick what you want to be known for. And I think many of you have probably seen this quote before, that people may not remember exactly what you did, but they'll remember how you made them feel. 
And I thought a lot about that too when I joined Pigment and what did I want our customers to think about when they thought about Pigment. And there's a lot of implementations. I've been actually in, in SaaS a lot, of, a lot of years. I've implemented a lot of customers. I've also uh, implemented tools within my own organizations and they're just you know, very unmemorable sometimes. And I wanted to have something that would mark a moment in time for our customers, that would make a difference because it was delightful and it was valuable. It's not just about being great, uh, having a great relationship and being happy, it's about also making sure that they are getting value. And that's something I think a lot about. And this is just an example of not a grand gesture, but with, I think a lot about these little moments and how they all make a difference in how people experience pigment. And so this is an example of an executive email. We send this before launch for our customers uh, to their executive. We name the project team and we say, you know, your, your fantastic project team has done a great job and we're very uh, proud to be partnering with you. And this is just a moment to really celebrate the project team, give that visibility to their executive. And we do a lot of different activities such as this. So for example, when a customer signs a renewal, we send them a little plant uh, just to signify our growth together and how we're going to continue to evolve. The second one is to build and maintain a, a community. So I have three kinds of community right now at Pigment. There, we have our user groups where we host uh, on-site events. We've done one recently in San Francisco and people come and learn from one another, share. We also have our customer advisory board. So that's a picture actually from our latest customer advisory board in Paris in July. We actually have our next one coming up uh, next week again. But this is where we unite our customers with three key goals. One is to understand what is top of mind that helps us go to market with better messaging understand how we're going to build a product. We show our roadmap and we let them give feedback, influence that. And then finally, if you ever go to our website, gopigman.com, if you see videos there, they're actually all recording through our, our cab as well. So we take that moment to really maximize the fact that we have our customers there. And sorry, and one thing I did mention in the community is we also have our online community. Online communities are very powerful done right. It takes a long, long time to build, so this is definitely an early investment but uh, it's something that is very worthwhile because then it, it takes a life of its own and you have to do a lot less in terms of support. And the final one is to stand out from the crowd. So I just want to show an example of what we do when our customers launch pigment. Again, to really mark that moment in time and maybe I will cue video uh, if it's ready. <laughs> Thing, but I asked customers, you know, how will you know if you've been successful at Pigment? And many of them told me, oh, Rebe, when I don't have any more Excels running around and, you know, I'm not chasing all these uh, difficult numbers. And so I tried to give them a piñata with an Excel logo and they can walk with their team and kind of say, you know, no more Excels for us now. Uh, the third is to be 1% better every day. And I am a huge fan of this notion that if you improve yourself 1% each day, by the end of the year, you're going to be 37 times better as a result. So uh, it's something I pay a lot of attention to. And uh, it really is a combination of all these little details and changes compounding. How we did at Pigment this is we actually mapped out the entire customer journey. We made sure that we understood where were the parts, each milestone, each resource that support that which team is in charge of it, which team supports, what are the bottlenecks? We ask them themselves, what are your bottlenecks, what's causing you to waste time? But we also measure that from a data perspective and pretty much my whole goal with the team has been to automate this as much as possible. So as we learn, as we grow, we, as we understand new things, we keep automating and we keep making sure that they, when they're spending time, they're spending time in the way that adds the most value. Don't shy away from big bets. So this is something also I, I mentioned I'm quite proud of, but to give you an example of our academy, before we had the academy, we used to train our customer. It would take eight hours per customer to train them on using pigment, at least. And we've actually now moved that completely self-served on the academy. So you can imagine these are eight hours that my team is able to spend on doing something a lot more valuable. Same with the community, it's still early on, we're only about six months in with our online community, but we're already seeing customers answer each other, uh, we're getting really excited about you know, becoming top users and things like that, so it's really creating that, that variety effect for us. 
And my probably most important tip is to invest in operations. So operations team is really the glue, the engine that powers everything. They bring you the data, the insights, they allow you to cost correct, and they are going to multiply every single effort that your team is doing. And on this slide is just an, a very small sample of actually all of the things that this team has done to make us way more efficient. So to give an example of the playbook, so we have this playbook enabled on our customer success tool called Plan Hat, but we have basically made a playbook for when there's a handover from sales to CSM to make sure that it's always consistent, that it's always the right way, and that we're not missing anything. We also have a playbook, for example, for onboarding. So every onboarding will have a pre-made task for the CSM with the emails, with the presentation, so that they don't have to spend that time doing that, and they're just spending time with the customer. And another playbook example that we have is if a customer starts to reach a certain number of license penetrations, so uh, they're really like living up to the seats that they bought, it creates a task for the CSM to start having an expansion conversation and, and getting there. An example, uh, I'll, 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 uh, the automated tasks are maybe aligned to that, but on the smart notifications, this is something I really love. So for example, when a user comes back after a certain number of inac uh, days of inactivity, we get a notification, so it just allows us to grab them right at the beginning. Uh, very recently, actually, one of our customers launched and I noticed that the CEO went in for the first time and right away I was able to send him a message and I said, hey, you know, how did you find your first experience? So we're able to have very much more meaningful conversations with that. Other type of notifications maybe just interesting when a customer is about to renew, uh, long before actually we start getting notifications to understand it, or if a customer actually is achieving, or a user rather, is getting into the top of the top performers and most active, then we also give them a, a badge to say, hey, you're in the top 25% of all of our users, and we really leverage all of these notifications for that. And finally, the enriched data as an example. So when we have, what we've built at Pigment is, we just don't see like, oh, this is John Joe using Pigment at Figma. What we see is that, hey, this is John Joe, and he's the head of finance. He's currently uh, opening three roles to hire. He's actually uh, just posted in the community. He has three tickets pending, and so we're, again, when we have these conversations, we just have all the context behind it to make that way more valuable for them. I think no chat could be complete without talking about the team. I will also say, I didn't put it here, but very important is the product. I'm very lucky also that our product is fantastic. We have an amazing relationship with the product team, a lot of empathy and cross-functional efforts, uh, but I want to talk about how we hire for the right people. And the first thing is that we are very clear into what we're looking for, and we have a scalable recruitment process. Everyone knows what we're asking, who is asking it, what, what, what good looks like, and we of course have our pigment values, these are our four pigment values, that we use to also assess whether someone will be living into the kind of spirit that we want to create. Being very clear on what are your known negotiables. Uh, I think this one is really hard for us at a startup where there's so much to do, and I think all of us want to find that unicorn person that is scrappy, yet very polished, that you know, can think commercially, but also be very technical. And uh, while we do find them, uh, sometimes you have to be very clear of what are the things that you're not willing to go without, and that will really make a difference if you make a misstep. With that, this is something I tell my team a lot when we're hiring, is that I don't want someone who can just do the job. Uh, that's great, and it's good to be able to do the job, but I want people that are going to bring a superpower to us and are going to make us better, because maybe they're very strong commercially, or maybe actually they've been on the customer side and they can give us that sense of empathy of what it's like to be there, or maybe they've just been in the industry a long time and they can bring some insights, so, uh, or maybe they've never been in the industry and they can, we can think about how someone who's never experienced this product would, would live it and, and adopt, adopt it. So uh, it's something I think a lot about, and every, every hire I've made so far, I'm very proud, I always find that superpower that is coming to improve us all. And hiring people you won't regret, uh, you will regret not working with. Every single interview I have, and I have a lot, at the end of it, I always ask myself one question. Would I be upset if I never saw this person again in my life? And it's a very simple question, but you have no idea how many times it's made me, and it's probably saved me from making the wrong hire, because 
a lot of times, and maybe to the next point, you know, we're desperate. We see our team that is very stretched, that is fighting for capacity, and we want to make sure that we, we can have someone in seat. And you want to avoid those red flags sometimes. You're like, oh, but maybe, you know, if, if this is the right way. And I just, I'm here to just advise you not to uh, avoid taking a p attention to these red flags. Ask yourself this question. And if it's someone that you would not forget and that you want to see in your working team, hire them. And then the final tip I have for you is around not selling yourself short. And uh, I think especially when we're in a startup, we're trying to get customers, we're trying to uh, build our brand, we don't, you know, we have a lot of uh, power sometimes. And I'm very proud to think about how do we, uh, you know, if we've done everything right, if, if we've done everything I said from the beginning, if we've hired the right people, if we've invested in the right foundations, if we know what we want to be known for, and we're every day improving, then hopefully you would have created an experience that is worth a lot. And so do not sell that short. So uh, this is, again, just an example, but like if you've done all the right steps, you know, you are going to be lucky and successful in, in getting more. So uh, first of how I think about this, being in a customer facing team especially, is not about being a yes man. To build a fantastic customer relationship is not about you saying yes to everything. It's not about you going above and beyond all the time because that actually doesn't build that respect and that partnership that you're supposed to have. So uh, an example of how we do this and how we actually build that trust is that we set the right expectations from the beginning. We say how often we're going to meet with them, what is the value of everything that, that we're bringing, uh, where are we going to show them something. So we actually, for example, also have a customer portal where we show them pretty much everything that we see. So we really open ourselves and say we're completely transparent and you're going to see exactly how we assess you and how we think about it this together. We also let them know who is part of their team, including all the way to our executive team. We also say, we're going to have a monthly check-in, we're going to do this, this is your level of support. So we just transparently communicate everything that, how they're going to live up in the pigment ecosystem. And then we put a price on things and we, we make sure that they are valued. So I'm very also proud when we started uh, our implementation team, uh, we actually very early on started charging for this. And I've been in other startups and uh, even at Meta before where we actually would just give this for free, you know, in kind of spirit of the ARR that you would be getting or nervous that they wouldn't sign if you kind of priced your services. And we have a fantastic professional services team at Pigment. They're probably the best in class in the world, uh, experts. And so customers have to also understand the value that they get and they're, um, they're really able to see that when they pay for this, it's definitely worth it, and also like how we're going to deliver to it. We also have what we call the premium packages, so premium services, and this is actually recurring ARR that we do where we give customers the ability to buy an upgraded service, so that would be faster response SLAs from support, it would be more certifications from the academy, it would be um, some uh, support hours, a dedicated CSM, and then based on this, they, they're able to, again, put a price, to maybe something that many customers do, many companies do for free, just to make sure that their customers are happy, our customers are happy, but they also value every time we invest an hour with them and we do something. And then finally, there's a lot about this give and take. So maybe you kind of see a, a theme across, but I really believe that we have to be in a partnership together, that we have to be open and transparent to one another. And I really appreciate this as well when we're thinking about discounts for our customers. Every discount that we give at Pikmin has a purpose. So that could be that they're signing a multi-year deal. That could be that uh, there's a high volume and so we're giving a volume discount. Or we also have what we call the advocacy discount. And what we do here is we tell our customers, hey, if we are successful, you know, I'm making you successful and you are truly happy, we would expect you to do a video testimonial, a case study, a G2 review, and then for that you get a certain percent of discount. And we hold them accountable to it. So again, we have really fantastic stories, a lot of great G2 reviews. So G2 is the platform that so there's software ratings. And thanks to all of this, we actually won 12 badges. Uh, many around like our, our great support and how customers experience. So yeah, I think it's about really knowing that you do have good things to offer and to price that. And then just to kind of conclude, I just want to say that no one has a monopoly of good ideas. So I would say try things out, get creative. Um, you know, sometimes you have to 
as uh, someone says, kiss a lot of frogs to find the right way. And don't be afraid to, you know, have a couple of failures here and there because they're getting you closer to where you want to get to each day. Uh, the second one is to include other teams. Uh, I mentioned we have a very close proximity with our product team, uh, but also with our sales team. And I mean, really all, all teams across Facebook, but I think sometimes good ideas come from them as well, where they say, you know, sometimes you're too close to the problem and they say, I have noticed you, you could do this better. And so definitely listen to your cross-functional partners as well. And if you're ever in doubt, I think the best idea is to listen to your customers. So uh, that's why the customer advisory board, for example, is quite important to us. But if you don't know uh, maybe, you know, how you want to price a certain thing or how you want to grow a certain feature, just ask them. And just to conclude, these are some of the resources that I think uh, are useful in this topic. So I just wanted to give you an idea of some books that I quite like or podcasts uh, that I think are interesting to look at. So um, In Depth, The Happiness Lab are good podcasts that I like. And then um, Atomic Habits is actually that whole principle of being 1% better every day and how those atomic habits uh, multiply the effect in the future. So that's all I wanted to share. I realize I'm a little bit uh, quick on my talk, but hopefully you enjoyed it. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to see me in the mentory launch or also uh, add me on LinkedIn. I'm very happy to share, very passionate about this topic. And yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.